Hi, in just 10 minutes, I'm going to explain you the entire DevOps lifecycle. You can easily understand what is CI CD and what are the various tools that comes in each DevOps lifecycle. So let's start. So here you can see we have one company and this is the client. The client has given one project to the company. The project name is project A. So once the project has been aligned to the company, the company will start working on the project. So in the initial phase, the company will start gathering the information about the project. What is the requirement of the client? What exactly the client is looking from the company for this project? So here they will also collect the resources. How many developers will require to complete this project? Also, they need the operation team because you're going to deploy the package into the production environment using the DevOps. So DevOps is the combination of DevOps teams plus operation teams. So here you need both the team. So initial phase, you need the developers. So developers is going to write the code for this project. Suppose you have chosen five developers to complete this project. Now developers will first collect the information of the project and they will decide on which language they are going to write the code for this project. So here we have the number of source code. Suppose the developer has decided they are going to use the Java language to write this code. So here the developers, they will start working on their laptop. So for source code management, the developers can use any tools. For this example, I'm just taking the Git. So developers, they will just install a Git software in their laptops and they will start writing the code. And here in the GitHub, that is a centralized location or we can say a web-based Git repository. So here you have to create a repository for this project. And all the five developers who is working on this project, they will start writing on this project and they will coordinate each other. And finally, once they will feel that they have written the code for this project, they will push the project or commit the code into the GitHub. We have already created one repository. So the code finally move into your GitHub repository. This is what happened in the continuous development. Now next is continuous integration. Now we have the code available in the GitHub. Now the next step is you need to build the package. So here, you can see that the developers has written the code in Java language. So for Java language, the tool is Maven. So with the help of Maven tool, you are going to build the package. Once the package is built, you are going to check the code quality. So here the operation team is going to build the package. Suppose the operation team, while they are trying to build the package, they are getting some errors. So they will coordinate with the developers. They will pass on those errors to the development team. Like uh, while building the package, I am getting these errors. So the developers teams further going to recreate the code for you. And they will again push the code into the GitHub. And then you can recreate the package using the Maven tool. So here you can see for different, different language, we have different tools. Now, once the package has been built, you can do the code quality check with the help of tool sonar cube. So here, if you're getting any errors further, then you are again going to talk to the developers. And then again, the developers teams, they will recreate the code according to the errors. And then again, you have to build the package. And finally, you have to do the code testing using this tool. And uh, suppose the code has been passed by this tool sonar cube. Now you have the package. So the build package will be either in the jar format or var format. So there will be a single file uh, for this uh, build or we can say it is a build artifacts. Now you need to save that uh, file into the repository. So here you can use the third party software like Nexus or JFrog. So the question is here, why don't we use the GitHub to save this uh, build artifacts or build? So the answer is that GitHub is having the limitation of a space. Suppose after building the package, the size of the package is of 3 GB. GitHub is not going to provide you 3 GB space. So in that case, you can go with the third party software. 
So here you can see building the package code quality test and deploy the package into the repository. So here if you want to work all the things automatically with the help of Jenkins, then it is called continuous integration. So as soon as the code has been commit to the GitHub, the Jenkins will automatically pull that code from the GitHub and uh, you will integrate uh, Git, Maven, SonarCube, Nexus with the Jenkins. So Jenkins is an automation tool. So as soon as the code will be pushed or commit to the GitHub, the Jenkins will pull that code and with the help of Maven, it is going to build the package. It is also going to check the code quality and finally it will push the package into the repository. So this is called the continuous integration. So you can do manually as well as automatically with the help of Jenkins. So it is up to you. If you are doing each and everything automatically, then it is called continuous integration. The next phase of your DevOps lifecycle is continuous testing. Now you have the package which has been built and also the code quality has been checked and finally your package is on the Nexus repository. Now you want to do the continuous testing of your package but where you are going to do the testing first you need to deploy your package. So you can deploy your package into the test environment. You can create any VM and on that VM you can deploy your package. So first you will do the testing of your package on test environment or a staging environment, pre-production environment or UET environment. So before to move your package into the production environment, you have to do the continuous testing of your package. So here deploy to the test environment, run in integration test, load test and any other test. So deployed software or deployed package can be tested continuously for bugs using the tools like Selenium and TestNG. So here you can see, so here you can see few DevOps tools that comes under the continuous testing. Suppose at this phase, continuous testing, your package got failed. So in that case, again, the operation team, the IT team will talk to the DevOps teams and uh, DevOps team is going to recreate the package according to the errors. Suppose your package has been passed from the continuous testing. The next phase is your continuous feedback. So here the customer feedback to improve the working of the software product and release new versions based on the response. Suppose your package has been tested properly from the continuous testing. It has been passed from the continuous testing. Now you will show your product to the customer. At that point, your customer may provide you some feedback. Maybe they are not happy with the outcomes. They want some modification in the product. So again, you will talk to the developers teams and they provide the feedback of the customer or the client so that the developers team again work on that. So here, this comes under the continuous feedback. Suppose the customer is also happy with the outcomes of the product. The next stage is your continuous deployment. So here you can see in the continuous deployment, there are two phases. Staging, we have already understood. During the staging, you will do the continuous testing. Now your product has been passed from the continuous testing and also from the continuous feedback. Now you are good to move your product or your software or your package into the production environment. So finally, you will move your package into the production environment. Suppose till here the deployment of the package to the production environment is completely automated with the help of Jenkins, then it is called CI CD. So in CI, we have the continuous integration. Once the package is deployed on the GitHub, automatically it will build the package and also it will do the code quality check and then finally it will move your package into the Nexus repository. And once the package is in the Nexus repository, it will automatically build the image using the Docker container and it will deploy to the VM. So here the Docker and Ansible comes into the picture. Now you have deployed your package into the staging test environment. So everything is doing with the help of Jenkins, Ansible and Docker. And the deployed package will be tested using 
the various tools like uh, selenium and test ng so this also you can integrate with the jenkin and finally you will have the feedback from the customer suppose uh, everything is uh, doing automatically with the help of uh, jenkin and uh, the various tools here you can see it is integrated with the jenkin and finally you have moved your package into the production environment so this is called continuous deployment suppose your package your software is in the test environment and before to move your package into the production environment you need some approval from the customer if you have such type of environment then it is called continuous delivery so in continuous delivery you need some approval from the client if it is completely automated you are not supposed to do anything manually then it is called continuous integration and continuous deployment so finally once you deployed your software or package into the production environment it requires monitoring so you can monitor the server you can monitor the package you can monitor the you can monitor the subsystems like cpu memory disk utilization lot of things you can monitor on the servers using various softwares like elk grafana Prometheus and Nagios. So these are the important tools that comes under the continuous monitoring. So this is all about the DevOps lifecycle. So hope with this diagram you can easily correlate between each DevOps lifecycle and understood what are the various tools comes under each phase of DevOps lifecycle. So that's all. We'll see you in the next lecture.